Teron Davenport, USA Today, Eagles Wire. Welcome back, Teron, as the draft is in the book. If I was to say the theme of this draft for the Eagles at the end of the day, what would you say the theme was? Well, I would say that the theme was three things. Toughness, mental toughness, physical toughness, and uh, production. I think that's really what it was all about. And you look at most of their picks, there are guys that had a high degree of of production throughout their college career, and they are tough guys, you know, whether it be the way they played or just, you know, their their personality. That's, I think, what was the theme was for the guys that uh, Joe Douglas and the crew brought in. Uh, give me your uh, breakdown of, uh, like I say, one of the themes to me too, Teron, was competition. If you if you're oh, someone yeah. who says I don't like to grade drafts or whatever at the end of the day, I would say this. My grade is they created competition. Now Pumphrey might not be able to play, Gibson might not be able to play, Hollins, but they sent a message to their guys that you will be competing to get on the field. There are no free passes on this offense this year. Well, yeah, hundred percent. That goes both ways because you have to look at Rasul Douglas also. Obviously, Derek Barnett is the number one pick for them. You know, these guys are, are going to come in and compete, and every year that's what happens. You have the rookies come in, and you have veterans who are released. So I, I like what they created as far as from a competitive standpoint where, you know, everybody has to fight for their job, and, and nothing is secure, you know, with the exception, obviously, a quarterback and, for the most part, the uh, offensive line. But, you know, it, it's a it's a situation where it's going to be, hey, you, you got to pay to play, and the way you pay is, is by way of going hard and practice and compete. I would talk with Teron Davenport, USA Today. Um, I want to get your take on Sidney Jones because everybody seems to say, well, what were they thinking? They needed help now. Others mm-hmm. said, too good to pass up. I personally loved when they made the pick. It was, uh, to me, you took the best guy. Uh, you knew that you had to get him right there. Um, I know other people say, look, Doug needed a guy right now. What was your take on Howie and Joe saying, you know what, we're going to take the best player at this point right now? Well, that is the one decision that I think, in addition to others, but I think that one for the most part shows 100% how they're looking at the long-term success of this team. Obviously, Sidney Jones is not going to come in and and be an impactful player right away, let alone towards the middle of the season. But when you look at just pure ability to play the cornerback position, it doesn't get better than Sidney Jones in this rookie class. I had Marshawn Lattimore, Gary Ann Conley, none of them could play the position as well as Sidney Jones. He's a guy that can bump inside, play the nickel. He can line up outside and hold his own there despite, you know, what some people call size restrictions. But, I mean, he's a long corner at, at right around 5'11", 6 feet, and he, he's aggressive. He plays against the run. His ball skills are tremendous. He'll turn the football over, and that's why people compare him to uh, Marcus Peters, uh, another guy that I compare him to just because of his ball skills and way to find the football is uh, Brent Grimes. So you're getting a guy who's going to get more opportunities for the offense to score points because he's going to turn it over. So, you know, when you look at uh, Sidney Jones, I mean, he's a home run of a pick as long as he could come back healthy. And, I mean, he had the sutures removed a couple weeks ago. I talked to him on the conference call, and he said that he's working on re- restoring his full range of movement and he should be back ready to go in in September. So then you're just going to look at just him trying to find his way. I mean, obviously, once you're ready to go, you're not fully ready to go coming back from an injury like that. So he'll find his way. And I think at some point, you know, uh, this upcoming season, you'll see him get back in order. But, you know, the real benefit for him is going to be next year, 2018. Teron Davenport with us. The NFL draft is in the books and in the fourth round, 132nd pick overall. The Eagles take a running back, Donnell Pumphrey from San Diego State. Now, Teron, you wrote about the Pumphrey pick asking this question. Did Howie Roseman outsmart the Cowboys for Pumphrey? Can you explain that? Well, yeah, apparently, according to one of the guys from the Dallas News, um, Dallas Morning News, I think it was, the Cowboys had all intentions of taking Pumphrey at 133. So if that were the case, you know, moving up to 132 to to take him, the Cow the Cowboys got fleeced. I mean, Harry Roseman. The thing that you have to respect about him is he has a good feel for when guys are going to be picked and who is interested in in particular guys. And I think that was the case here, and where he moved up ahead of the Cowboys. And I, you know, the report came out that they were going to going to take him. So. 
They get a guy who obviously isn't the same player as Darren Sproles, but he's a guy who could impact the offense in a similar way and help you out on special teams. Sproles is probably going to retire after this year, so they did an excellent job of getting a guy like that. And Pumphrey, you know, is a guy that's 5'9", 176, and people are going to knock him for his size. But I tell you what, he's able to run the ball inside. I'm not saying consistently, but from time to time he is. And he could cause trouble because he's so small. He could hide behind offensive linemen, pop out at the last moment. It's it's harder to track a guy like that in the pocket, or excuse me, um, inside, you know, in, in between the tackles. And that's something that a lot of the linebackers that have played against Pumphrey, whether it be at the Senior Bowl, or when he was at San Diego State, that's something that they say was an issue for them as far as tackling them inside. So I think it's a great pick. He catched the ball out of the backfield. He's a diverse player, and that's that's what they need in that offense. Eagles draft a couple of wideouts, Mac Hollins in the fourth round, Shelton Gibson in the fifth round. What does that mean for Nelson Aguilar, Toronto? Well, I think Aguilar would be fine. You know, he's just going to have to compete, you know, just like every other receiver on that team. I think really the pressure is on uh, Doral Green Beckham just because uh, Mac Hollins is a guy that, that can also fulfill a special teams role. And, and you have so many um, spots on, on the roster. So the guys who could do both, you know, uh, double duty, that's going to have a, a better value to the team because they could fill two roster spots with one guy. But when you look at body types, he and, and Doyle Green Beckham are, are similar as far as body types. I don't think either one of those guys are a real standout receiver, but the one to watch is going to be Shelton Gibson. And obviously, he ran the four or five at the combine, but you know, at his pro day, he was four three nine on the field, which is most important. When you watch him, he runs by people, and, and that's what you want. You know, that's what you need on the outside—a guy that could be that vertical threat. And I think he is their their vertical threat. Obviously, in addition to uh, Torrey Smith. And the other thing that, that Shelton Gibson brings is the return ability. You know, you have a guy who, who can return kickoffs, and then that will allow Wendell Smallwood to not do that and focus on just being the running back, which should help his durability. And then uh, going back to Pumphrey, you know, he could help in the return game also on punt returns. So Shelton Gibson, I think, is the, the best pick out of the two as far as receivers are concerned. Teron Davenport here. Um, Teron you mentioned Smallwood. Was this a vote of confidence for him? With them going Pumphrey, they never went with the bigger back. Was this them saying, "We, you're our guy? Yeah, I think it was a vote of confidence, but you have to remember they were looking to move up to get Dalvin Cook. So, you know, it's not a, a total vote. It's not, you know, they were all or nothing with, with Wendell Smallwood. They tried to do things to move up and get Cook. And then uh, in addition to that, you have to look. They were interested in Jamal Williams, Aaron Jones, both of which went to, went to the Packers. But end of the day, you know, Smallwood is the guy that's in the mix. He's the, the one most capable out of all the guys right now to be that, that not feature back, but be the primary back. And then interestingly enough, Howie Rosen said that he stressed that Ryan Matthews is still on the team. And he talked like as if he's a guy that's, that's going to be there in 2017. I mean, that remains to be seen. But, uh, you know, that's that's pretty much what it is there. Hey, uh, Douglas steps right on the field and play, in your opinion? Uh, Russell Douglas, yeah. I, I think he is going to step right on the field and play. I think he's going to, you know, um, eventually work his way to a starting role outside, probably at right corner. I think Mills is going to be the left corner. But when you look at Patrick uh, Robinson, he'll see a lot of time in, in the nickel. And I think he'll initially start outside and bump inside, similar to what they did with Ron Brooks last year. You know, when they go to their nickel package, Brooks would move inside. That's what's going to happen with uh, Robinson. And then they'll bring in Rasul Douglas. So he'll see a lot of playing time. You guys are going to like his game. You know, very aggressive, uh, really good ball skills. Um, he's someone that will come up and, and fight against the run, you know, make plays there. And, and he'll be physical with receivers. He has nice long arms that could – really disrupt guys at the line of scrimmage, which is what they need, and that could give guys like Barnett and, and uh, uh, Brandon Graham and the crew more time to get to the quarterback because that's what teams did against them a lot. You know, they ran those quick-hitting type of plays, and you had them being able to get off the line nice and easy, quick release, three-step, bang, make the completion, and that doesn't give anybody time to get to the quarterback. 
hey, uh, I'm a WVU grad, so I've seen every game that Douglas and Gibson have played. So I like the pipeline coming from Morgantown uh, to Philadelphia. These guys are guys I think are really going to fit in some nice roles here. Uh, overall, without you know giving a grade or whatever, but uh, Howie Roseman, Joe Douglas, did they fill the needs? Did they add enough competition after their first draft together? Yeah, I think they added a, a enough competition. And more importantly, the reason why I give this this graph a good grade is because they're working towards establishing an identity. Our first talk that we had today, you know, the first question was, you know, what was the theme? Well, the theme is mental toughness. The theme is production. They're working towards establishing who a Philadelphia Eagle is. And in this book, there's going to be, you know, guys who are tough, guys and that's both physically and mentally and I, I think they did a really good job of setting the foundation for that with these guys that they brought in. Jerron Davenport at T Davenport underscore NFL. Check him out, USA Today. Uh, all of the Eagles draft recaps. He's got a ton of stuff. Uh, read the piece on, uh, of course, uh, as we just mentioned there, uh, Rasul Douglas. Very interesting story. Shelton Gibson and uh, the rest of the draft class over at uh, T Davenport underscore NFL as uh, Teron Davenport kind enough to join us. Thanks, pal. You got it. Thanks a lot.